Let's talk about how different atmospheric currents and geographic factors can influence climate zones around the world. Global convection currents, the rain shadow effect, and other geographic factors make precipitation around the globe very uneven. On this chart, the white and yellow areas receive fairly low levels of precipitation as compared to the blue areas on the global chart, which receive fairly high levels of precipitation. And then the green is somewhat in between. So on this map, we see that the white and yellow areas would include places such as Northern Africa, um, Northern Asia, and then Western United States. These areas all receive fairly low levels of precipitation compared to the other areas that are in blue, such as uh, much of South America and Southern Africa and uh, much of Europe, which receive fairly high levels of precipitation. So this map is nice because it allows us to visualize the tropical regions on our globe, which tend to be near the equator, that band around the equator and the subtropic areas, which are um, yellow or white on this chart. NASA Earth Observatory has many different atmospheric parameters that they measure. And from these measurements, they generate these lovely movies for our entertainment and education. So on these flattened Earth images, so note the Earth is not flat, but these are globes that have been flattened out. Um, on the left, we can see the land surface temperatures on the globe, and then on the globe on the right, we see, again, the precipitation. And so I will play the movie. And on this movie, we can watch uh, the blue rain belt and the dry white regions, and that's moving up and down as we go through the seasons. So you can see as the northern hemisphere warms up and turns more pink in the summer, that's when the blue rain belt also moves up into the northern hemisphere. And that's what brings those monsoon rainfalls in the summer months in the northern hemisphere. Then when we go into November, December, the, the warm regions are in the southern hemisphere and the rain belt moves, moves south of the equator. So this is a lovely way to kind of see how is Earth's temperature changing over the months and how is precipitation changing with that corresponding change in the seasons from um, as we warm in the northern or the southern hemisphere during the summer. Based on these observed trends in global air currents and precipitation patterns, a scientist named Vladimir Koppen divided the globe into six major climate categories. And these included tropical, dry, moist subtropics, mid-latitudes, the moist continental mid-latitudes, polar, and then a special uh, region called highlands. These categories can be further subdivided into subcategories based on the amount and timing of their precipitation, which is the second letter in lowercase after the first um, capitalized letter, and based on their temperature pattern, which is the third letter, um, which is also in lowercase. So we see that the tropical regions are in green with an A, on the map, so near right around the equator is where we see these tropical regions. Uh, the dry regions hover around 20 to 20 degrees north or south of the equator, and those are denoted with a B. So you can see the Sahara Desert, um, some of the middle, um, the western regions of the United States, and there's other regions. Of course, Australia has a desert region or dry region. Uh, then we see the moist subtropics and the moist continental mid-latitudes. These span from as low as 20 degrees north or south of the equator all the way up to 60 degrees north or south of the equator. And these are designated with letters C or D. So you can see these hover around the 40 degree latitude line all the way up to almost 60 or actually up to 60. And then when you get uh, north or south of about 65, 70 degrees latitude, that's when you enter the polar regions. And these are denoted with the letter E, and they are pink on the, on the graph. 
Finally, the highlands regions, which are H, you don't really see these on the global map because these are smaller microclimates um, in the when you're looking at a global scale, and these occur when you have mountainous regions. We will start at the equator, looking at the tropical climate category, which extends from the equator to about 20 degrees north or south. This region has very steady, constant temperatures that are warm, but never super hot or super cold. They average um, around 64 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius year round. And it tends to be pretty rainy, as we would expect in the tropics. So they get more than 59 inches of precipitation a year. And this would include regions such as Central America and Northern South America, and then some of those tropic bands in Africa and Asia. The dry regions on Earth tend to extend from 20 degrees to 35 degrees north or south of the equator. These, in these regions, we see that evaporation from soil surfaces and transpiration from plants can equal or exceed precipitation, which causes them to be dry. These areas often include large continental regions that are surrounded by mountains, and so they are subject to the rain shadow effect. And they include, in the United States, um, areas like Arizona, Nevada, California's Death Valley. And then if we look globally, they also include regions such as the Tibetan Plateau, which is a, an example of a dry region that isn't hot. It's a cold, colder, dry region. And other places like Australia have large, dry areas. Next, we encounter the moist subtropical mid-latitude regions. And these regions tend to be very populated because the weather is pleasant much of the year. So these, ex these regions will experience warm and humid summers. They often have convective thunderstorms because of that warm, humid air. Um, and then they, they have mild winters, but some of them will have um, cyclones. So it's not all peachy and wonderful. Um, they do extend from about 30 to 50 degrees north and south of the equator. So in the United States, this would be the east and west coasts of the United States. So any of these coastal regions and parts of the middle um, of, the, of the United States. This is also much of uh, Western Europe, which it has a very nice mild climate and uh, parts of South Africa and Southern South America. So a lot of different areas around the world have these um, moist subtropical mid-latitude climates. As we move slightly north or south of the sea category, this leads us to the moist continental mid-latitudes. And these are um, areas that are not as warm in the summer and they don't have those convective storms as much. Uh, these tend to have warm or cool summers with the warmest month warming up to more than 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius, but they do have cold and severe winters. And so these winters can get colder than minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 30 degrees Celsius. So these are just a slightly cooler version of the sea climates. They're still moist. They still receive a lot of precipitation and they have a lot of vegetation growing as a result. And this would include places like Canada, Eastern Europe, Russia, and China um, as some examples of places with this moist continental mid-latitude area within the boundaries. The polar regions extend from 66 degrees north or south of the equator to the poles. In these areas, we see year-round cold temperatures, but definitely we do see colder temperatures in the winters when there's no daylight for a month or two during the polar winters. The warmest month in the polar regions is typically still less than 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. And examples of areas that have polar climates would be the northern coast of North America, so that tip of Alaska and Canada, 
um, also the northern coast of Europe and Asia. Uh, Greenland is in the polar regions. And in the south, Antarctica, of course, is a big polar continent. This friendly image of a penguin and its baby are just here to remind us that although the polar regions are cold, that doesn't mean that they're devoid of life. So there are a lot of marine mammals that make these regions their home, and there's actually a lot of life um, in these polar regions. So finally, this brings us to our special case, which are these somewhat microclimates um, called highlands, or also known as alpine regions. So these are unique, and they're based on elevation or altitude. So what is the altitude above sea level? So these areas, they are colder regions because they are at high altitudes, not because of the latitude, you know, where are they on Earth. And so we do see in these areas, they tend to get very cold in the winter, and they don't get super warm in the summer. They do have sharp changes in climate based on the altitude. So as you travel up, that climate changes very quickly. And this would include thing, places like, well, any anywhere really in the Rocky Mountains, uh, the Sierra Nevada Mountains in the United States. Tibet, of course, is a huge region, highland region on Earth. And there's many others, the Alps in Europe, for example. So highlands are these unique places that have high altitudes, and that leads to unique climates.